The rule of two dictates that only two Sith should exist at any given time. But when and how was this rule established? In 1999, The Phantom Menace came out in theaters. There's no way it's going to be a disappointment. Are there any of you that think this is going to be a lousy movie? No! The projector rolled, and... Thumbs way down. But the film's novelization came out a month earlier. It features the entire plot of the film, plus some extra lore only found in the book. George Lucas had numerous conversations with the author during the writing of this book about the Jedi and the Sith, one of which made its way into a passage in the book, which briefly mentioned a Darth Bane, the Sith who reinvented the Order 1000 years ago and established the Rule of Two. Two there should be, no more, no less. One to embody the power, the other to crave it. Canonically, this meant that with only two Sith, there would be less infighting over power within the Order, and the dark side would be more focused on just two individuals rather than a whole army of Sith. His Rule of Two did engineer the eventual Jedi Purge that we see in Revenge of the Sith. The life of Darth Bane is portrayed in a book trilogy by Del Rey and six comics by Dark Horse. And before we start, be sure to subscribe to get some more classic Star Wars content, and check out the Patreon if you'd like to support the channel and to vote on upcoming lore topics. So this is going to be a slightly longer video, so grab a drink and get comfy as we head back to the Old Republic. Dessel was a human male born on Apatros in 1026 BBY. Apatros was a barren planet on the Outer Rim with a single colony. Unknown to anyone at the time, this child was Force-sensitive. He was an only child born into a family of miners. His mother died giving birth to him and his father blamed him for her death. His father despised Des throughout his life, drinking habitually, abusing him, and he called Des the bane of his existence. At the age of 16, Des became a Cortosis miner, like his father, and when he turned 18, he stood up to his drunken father and was beaten badly. That night, full of hatred, Des envisioned his father's heart being strangled by a giant hand. In the morning, his father was found dead from a massive heart attack. At age 23, Des had become a hardened adult, a two-meter-tall hulk of a man with broad shoulders, with not a hair on his head. Ever since the planet's leadership signed a Republic military contract for Cortosis, miners worked overtime, lost their hair, and were breathing toxins for 10 hours a day. No one on Apatros liked the Republic. He went to the local cantina and joined a sabak game with some Republic officers. After a long, grueling game of sabak, fueled by anger and hatred of his opponents, Des won the pot of 10,000 credits. You can hear the play-by-play -play of the final Sabak hand in my Sabak lore video, link in the description. Later that night, a Republic ensign from the Sabak game ambushed Des with a vibroblade. Des killed him in self-defense, unconsciously using the Force to survive. To avoid arrest, his friend helped smuggle him off of Apatros, and Des joined the Sith army during the New Sith Wars. The New Sith War was a thousand-year conflict between the Republic and the Sith, starting around 2,000 years BBY. Des enlisted with the Brotherhood of Darkness, the last bastion of the Sith Empire. He was assigned to a unit called the Gloomwalkers, and with his Force sensitivity, they became an elite unit. Des earned the diehard respect of his peers, and became the new commander after staging a mutiny against their former leader, who had almost led them into a suicide mission. That commander tried to get Des in trouble with a Sith Lord. A Sith Lord? But after reports of Dez's miraculous exploits on the battlefield, the Sith Lord noticed his abilities and instead of punishing him, took him to Korriban to train at the Sith Academy. On Korriban, the Brotherhood of Darkness trained Sith Lords, of which there were dozens if not hundreds. The leader of the Brotherhood was Scar Khan, the most powerful known Sith Lord. He was off fighting the Jedi's Army of Light at the time Dez arrived at the Academy. As a Sith apprentice, Dez took on a new name, Bane, reminding him of his father and filling him with hatred that would stoke his dark side training. His new goal in life was to understand and command the power of the dark side. Bane studied under Lord Kasim, the Blade Master, and Lord Cordis, the Headmaster of the Academy. Lord Cordis was in charge while Khan was away. Bane quickly surpassed his peers in training, 
even some who had trained their entire lives. He studied ancient Sith history in the archives below the academy, but was quickly discouraged by the masters, who stated that the old Sith were flawed and to focus on his current studies. See, Lord Khan's brotherhood steered away from the ancient Sith ways. Where Sith used to hide knowledge and kill each other for power, Khan tried to unite the Sith to beat the Jedi, and he banned the Darth title, saying it caused too much rivalry and gave Jedi a target. Unconvinced, Bane complied and stopped his studies. Bane eventually challenged a rival McCurth student to a duel. The McCurth beat Bane and taunted him. It filled Bane with rage and he unleashed a wave of powerful dark side energy, accidentally killing his opponent. Instead of punishment, Bane was given extra attention by his blade master, Kasim, to sharpen his lightsaber skills. After the incident, he was feared and respected, but then Bane realized that he had caused his father's death years ago using the force, and he started to fear it. And that wavering made his connection to the dark side weaken, and everyone noticed. In his vulnerability, he challenged the strongest student he knew of, a Zabrak blade specialist, Sarak. Bane hoped the duel would reinvigorate the force within him and prove he was as strong as ever. But an invisible veil kept the force distant from him and he lost to the Zabrak warrior. Badly. It took three weeks in the Bacta tanks to heal his broken bones. He thought back to his father's beatings as a child. Bane was ridiculed throughout the academy and the masters didn't give him private lessons anymore. He'd become a Sith outcast. Just like how he dealt with his troubles on Apatros, he withdrew into himself. He started to go back to the archives to study, mostly because no one was there and it was the only supplemental training he could get. And while reading these ancient Sith texts, a faint sense of the dark side came back to him. He had lost hope before, but now he gave himself to his studies. He started to realize the flaws of the Brotherhood Sith. In the Brotherhood, all were considered equals in attempt to avoid infighting. Contrary to the ancient Sith, there were dozens, hundreds of Sith Lords in order to fight the Jedi in equal numbers. Power was spread thin, and rivalries were discouraged. Bane's opinion of the Brotherhood started to change. That's when he met Githany. She was a Jedi Padawan turned to the dark side and was as strong in the Force as she was beautiful. She had just come back from a victory on Rusan with Lord Khan. Serac was her rival too and she feared being challenged and losing to him. So she looked for Bane's help since he had experience fighting Sarak. She thought she could manipulate him since he was the weakest person at the academy, perceivably. In return, she would train him with whatever the masters taught her. Bane agreed, but eventually he realized that Githany wouldn't train him in everything she knew. It would be weak to give up all of her knowledge. Bane wanted to be the one to beat Sarak, not Githany. He snuck out after curfew to Lord Kasim's room and convinced him to give him private lightsaber lessons. In exchange, Kasim would get credit with Lord Khan for training a potential top student. More specifically, a student that Lord Cordis had given up on. And Kasim agreed to this training. So Bane trained in the Force with Githany and the Blade with Kasim, and neither of them knew the other was training him. And in his off time, he studied the wisdom of ancient Sith in the Archive. He didn't have time for sleep, he merely meditated two hours a night and the dark side gave him the energy for his training. Githany and Bane had also grown feelings for one another. Weeks later, after a normal class of training, Bane challenged Sarak again. He had agreed with Githany before that he'd kill the Zabrak warrior if he won. In a heavy rainstorm in front of the entire class, Bane defeated Sarak with barely any effort at all, but he spared his life. Bane's shocking showcase of power and sparing Sarak did three things. Angered Githany for not killing Sarak as planned. Kasim awarded Bane with his old master's lightsaber whom he killed in a test of skill. And Cordis revealed to Bane that he knew about the secret training with Githany. He ordered them to stop meeting entirely and banned Bane from the archives forever. Infuriated, Bane left the academy to seek out the Valley of Dark Lords in hope of finding something to aid his knowledge of the ancient Sith ways. He was adamant that the Brotherhood was going to destroy the Sith. Back on Rusan, Lord Khan was expecting retaliation by the Jedi. So to bolster his army, 
he sent orders to Korriban to promote all apprentices to Sith Lord, give them a lightsaber, and bring them to Rusan to fight the inevitable counterattack. Bane trekked across the wastelands of Korriban with his new lightsaber and found the Valley of Dark Lords. But all the tombs were empty. It turns out, after a redeemed Revan drove the Sith off of Korriban 3,000 years ago, the Jedi looted and destroyed everything. Bane tried to communicate with the spirits of the ancient lords, hoping to at least learn some secrets the Jedi or Brotherhood couldn't find, but they didn't appear. The dark side was faint on this planet in general, even here in the valley. He surmised that these spirits left not because the Jedi looted the place, but because they sensed the Brotherhood's perversion of the Sith ways. This solidified in Bane's mind that the Brotherhood was a farce, no different than the Jedi they warred against, and that Khan was unfit to lead. After 13 more days of searching, Bane almost died of thirst and starvation, so he gave up and headed back to the Academy. When he got back, Cordis promoted him to Sith Lord and gave him a new lightsaber crystal, hoping Bane wouldn't act out before being sent to Rusan. That night, Githany lured Bane to the archives and Bane was ambushed by Serac and two of his cronies with their new lightsabers. Githany helped Bane defeat them and as Serac begged for his life, Bane thought of everyone he'd killed before. The guilt had held him back from his training before, almost ruining his connection to the dark side. His final words to Serac were, Those who ask for mercy are too weak to deserve it, before decapitating him with his lightsaber. Bane went up to Cordis' office and denounced the Brotherhood. He called Cordis a coward, all in front of the other so-called Sith Lords. He announced himself as Dark Lord of the Sith, with the band title Darth. Darth Bane. No one was bold enough to try to stop him. He stormed out to the spaceport and stole Cordis' new ship that was a gift to him from Khan for doing such a good job training the students. Bane flew to Lahan better known as Rakata Prime, or the Unknown World. Lahan was visited by Darth Revan 3,000 years ago to acquire the Starforge. The planet's also a gravesite for the Starforge and the Rakata, an extinct race of Dark Force users who once ruled the galaxy. Bane hoped to find something here. He mind-controlled a Rancor, read its thoughts, and found an ancient temple. Some believe that Bane found the Temple of the Ancients from KOTOR, but Bane describes this place as a four-sided pyramid so it's likely to be different, or it's a confusion between the book and the game. There, Bane found Darth Revan's Sith holocron and spent weeks studying his teachings. Back on Rusan, Githany had a premonition. She saw Bane on Lahan, and he came to Rusan to destroy the Brotherhood. She told Khan about it, and then Khan ordered Kasin to go to Lahan and kill Bane if he didn't rejoin the Brotherhood. Darth Revan's holocron started to die out at some point, but Revan gave Bane some final advice. Those who accept the dark side also accept the challenge of holding on to it. By its very nature, the dark side invites rivalry and strife. It's the greatest strength of the Sith. It culls the weak from our order. The power of the dark cannot be dispersed among the masses. It must be concentrated in the few who are worthy of the honor. In Bane's mind, it finally clicked. Strength in numbers was a trap for the Sith, and an advantage for the Jedi. It's why they always won, historically. Bane theory crafted the best way for the Sith to finally destroy the Jedi. One Sith Lord would be all-powerful, but they'd also need to pass their knowledge down in some way. Holocron crafting was a lost art, so an apprentice should be taken. A master to lead, an apprentice to crave power and the concentrated power of the dark side would only be split two ways. Thus, Bane's rule of two was created. Kasim arrived on Lahan and found Bane. They dueled in the temple, but Bane was dramatically outmatched with the blade. Just as Bane was about to be struck down by Kasim, he shot out a concussive force wave that was blocked, but the wave knocked the temple ceiling down and killed his former blade master. Bane sent a message drone to Khan, admitting to killing Kasim, but regretting it. He lied about wanting to rejoin the Brotherhood out of guilt, and enclosed coordinates to his next destination, a planet called Ambrio. He also included instructions to perform an ancient Sith ritual he learned from Darth Revan's holocron. 
the Thought Bomb. The Thought Bomb was a dangerous Sith ritual that required numerous Sith Lords. It unleashes a supermassive blast of dark energy, creating a vacuum that sucks in the spirits of Force Sensitives and disintegrates their bodies. Everyone caught by the Thought Bomb are trapped side by side for eternity in an unbreakable frozen sphere of pure energy. When Khan and Githany saw Bane's message, Githany volunteered to meet Bane on Ambria and assassinate him, since he'd become too dangerous to the Brotherhood. Khan agreed, and he kept the portion of the Thought Bomb to himself. On Ambria, Githany arrived, and she poisoned him with her lips and multiple passionate kisses. Bane tasted the poison, but he thought he could withstand it. And he lied to her about rejoining the Brotherhood, and Githany went back to Rusan first. Bane realized that the poison he tasted was only there to cover up a much more serious toxin. He tried to use the dark side to heal it, but he realized he was going to die. He killed some locals and their children and fed off of their anguish, but it wasn't enough. Luckily, he found a healer named Caleb, and threatened his daughter to get him to cure the poison. Afterwards, he spared Caleb's life, since he could be useful later. Bane went to Rusan and the Brotherhood was shocked to see him alive. Bane mocked them and pretended to rejoin the Brotherhood. He even persuaded other Sith Lords to help him perform a Sith ritual he learned on Lahan, and he unleashed a raging inferno onto a forest where Jedi were hiding. Before Bane could kill the Jedi, Khan had the other Sith cut the ritual off short, opting to finish the Jedi in glorious battle. That's when Bane noticed something. Khan had a tremendous ability to manipulate the minds of those around him. He was also a master of battle meditation, able to boost coordination and morale of his troops during battle. He wasn't a great leader, and it explained why everyone, even Githany, were so devoted to him. Bane tried to sway Githany to be his apprentice, but realized she was too far gone with the Brotherhood. So when all the Sith went to go fight, Bane went back to camp and found Cordis, who offered his allegiance to Bane and requested him to kill Khan and lead the Brotherhood. Bane laughed and responded by force choking him to death. Then Bane went to Khan's tent and ordered the Sith fleet to engage the Jedi fleet, opening a Sith blockade and allowing Jedi reinforcements to land. The Brotherhood was on the verge of victory but had to retreat from battle because of this. Now total defeat was inevitable for the Sith army and its general. When Khan got back, Bane admitted to what he did. Khan could sense that he could not kill Bane. So instead he used his mind domination power on Bane. Which had no effect but Bane played along. While Khan thought he was manipulating Bane, Bane actually tricked Khan into forming a plan to lure the Jedi to an isolated location and then use the Thought Bomb as a last resort, all while Bane stayed at camp due to being a liability. Khan agreed, in hopes that their connection to the dark side would shield them from the Thought Bomb's blast. Bane's plan to destroy the Brotherhood was in full motion. Khan led the Brotherhood to a cave system to start the Thought Bomb, and the Jedi predictably followed them. Githany started having second thoughts. Khan looked like a madman, and she realized she should have believed Bane. Khan was indeed leading them all to destruction. When the Jedi found them in the cave, Khan detonated the bomb, sending a blast kilometers in every direction that would vaporize the bodies of all Force users while simultaneously ripping their spirits from their corporeal shells. Even Githany, who tried to flee before detonation. Bane engineered the destruction of the Brotherhood, and the Jedi didn't even know he existed, but he still needed an apprentice. He searched the aftermath of the Thought Bomb and he found Xana, a ten-year-old girl who had just killed two Jedi with the Force. The Jedi had accidentally killed her friend, so she struck out in anger. Bane knew he'd found his apprentice. They also found Xana's cousin, Derivit. Derivit was at first a Jedi Padawan and then later a Sith Initiate during the Seventh Battle of Rusan. Derivit challenged Bane, but Xana blew his hands up with the Force, in hopes that Bane would leave him alone, which he did. Bane went back to the Sith camp and he looted Cordis' tent, and he found information of a Sith tomb on Duxon, a moon over Onderon. He went to Duxon and left Xana on Rusan as a test of survival. She was to find a way to survive and get to Onderon in two weeks to meet him. He crash-landed on Duxon and eventually found Frida Nad's tomb. He located the holocron inside, but when he claimed it, he was attacked by scarab-like creatures who latched onto his skin. Bane learned from Nad's holocron that these were orbalisks, and no matter what he did, he couldn't get them off. 
They multiplied all over his body, feeding off the dark side energy inside of him. It was excruciatingly painful, but in return, they injected him with chemicals that rapidly healed him, enhanced his senses, speed, and strength, and acted as lightsaber-proof armor, similar to the cortosis he mined on Apotros. Another side effect was that it caused him to go into an intense bloodlust during battle. And if the Orbalisks ever died, they would inject lethal toxins into him before falling off. So with the Holocron and the new Orbalisks installed on his body, he left the tomb, and he mind-controlled a Drexel and flew it to Duxon's atmosphere. Onderon was another planet, over 100 kilometers away, so Bane summoned a protective dark side shield and flew through the vacuum of space on a Drexel. When he landed on Onderon, he found his apprentice, alive. Xana had tricked a family into letting her on the ship, killed all but the pilot in cold blood, and then when she landed on Onderon, killed the pilot as well. And Xana's training formally began. Ten years of training passed. Bane and Xana worked in secrecy from the galaxy, setting up intel networks and meddling in political affairs from the shadows. One day, Xana came back from a mission with an apprentice of her own to kill Bane. Bane killed the apprentice and went into a berserk rage and almost killed Xana until she revealed that her apprentice had information on how to create a holocron, something Bane had struggled to do for some time now. He took the info and he sent Xana in disguise to the Jedi Temple to research how to remove the Orbalisks since they were becoming a problem. They not only sent him into an unnatural bloodlust, but they were aging him faster than normal. While Xana did that, he took the information and went to Tython, a planet in the Deep Core, and found the fortress of Belia Darzu, an ancient Sith Lord. After fighting off an army of Techno Beasts, he found the Holocron of Belia Darzu and learned how to make a Holocron himself. Soon after, Xana landed on Tython with her cousin Derovit of all people. Derovit coincidentally had also gone to the Jedi Temple to warn the Council that the Sith were still out there. And lo and behold, he recognized Xana at the Jedi Temple. They decided to escape together, and the Jedi followed them. There was a clash between the Jedi and the Sith Lords at Darzu's fortress. Darth Bane and Darth Xana were almost victorious. Bane used Force Lightning on his last foe, but another fatally wounded Jedi threw a Force Bubble on Bane's target at the last moment, deflecting the lightning bolts and shocking Bane's Orbalisks right off his body. The bugs released their toxins, and Bane started to die. Xana and Derivit took Bane back to Ambria. Derivit was conflicted on helping, but he couldn't betray his cousin even at this point in her Sith life. Xana brought Bane to Caleb the Healer, who only agreed to heal them if they turned themselves into the Jedi. Xana agreed. She sent a message to the Jedi, and Bane was healed. But before the Jedi arrived, Xana used the dark side to drive Derivit to complete insanity, and then she killed Caleb and hid under the hut with Bane. When the Jedi arrived on Ambria, Derivit attacked them in his madness, and the Jedi killed him easily, assuming he was the last of the Sith. Another ten years passed. The two Sith moved to Sutric IV, into a mansion where Bane collected Sith artifacts and successfully created his own holocron. He also noticed Xana was waiting too long to challenge him, waiting until he got old and weak before fighting him. He referred to one of his Sith artifacts he collected, an old record of Darth Ondedu, who somehow lived for centuries. His new goal was to discover Ondedu's power. Bane located Andedu's fortress on Prakath, and he retrieved Andedu's holocron learning the power of essence transfer, the ability to thrust the user's spirit into another body as long as the user of the ritual was stronger in the force than the victim. Bane had found Andedu's secret to immortality. When Bane returned to his mansion on Sutric IV, he was ambushed by a force-sensitive Iktachi assassin and knocked out with a neurotoxin-laced blade. When he came to, he was face to face with Princess Sarah, Caleb's daughter, who tortured him for killing her father. Bane eventually escaped, but only because his guard served with him in the Gloomwalkers. As Bane escaped, Xana landed at the stronghold and attacked him. She had learned that Bane was trying to defeat death and wouldn't pass any more knowledge on to her, so she tracked him down and wanted to kill him. Lucky for her, Bane was also unarmed. While Bane tried to fight Xana off, 
Sarah initiated the self-destruction of the prison. Bane and Xana were separated by the explosion, and as Bane escaped, he ran into the Yiktachi Force-sensitive assassin from earlier, who handed him his lightsaber. Bane took her on as a new apprentice and hunted Princess Sarah back to Ambria, and the Yiktachi killed her. She revealed that she was known as the Huntress, but Darth Bane gave her a new name, Darth Cognus. Bane sent a message to Xana's ship to end the conflict and see who's stronger once and for all. Xana accepted. They engaged in an epic duel on Ambria. Darth Cognus sat out and watched them duel. It didn't matter who won to her. But she could barely keep up watching because the Dark Lords moved so quickly. Bane had almost defeated Xana when she revealed her own secret Sith magic, manifesting tendrils out of pure dark side energy. The tendrils could come out of the ground and almost knocked Bane out cold, but Bane still subdued her. Before he delivered the coup de gras, a tendril intercepted his upper arm and dissolved it instantaneously. His forearm, hand, and lightsaber fell to the ground. He tried with all his might to use force lightning on Xana, but the tendrils were made of pure dark side energy and absorbed it. Then, in desperation, he used the power of essence transfer, and his target was Xana. In a burst of crimson light, in a millisecond, his body vaporized into ash. Bane found himself inside Xana's body, sensing everything she sensed, screaming her screams. A battle of wills ensued in Xana's mind. One would have to snuff the other out of existence, and after a few moments, it was all over. Darth Xana approached Darth Cognus, announcing that Bane was gone, and she would take Cognus as her new apprentice. She gave Darth Cognus Bane's old lightsaber, and Xana's left fist continually clenched and unclenched. It's perceived that some piece of Bane lived on inside of Xana, but canonically Bane was defeated. His rule of two lineage would continue for generations, up until Darth Vader redeemed himself into Anakin Skywalker and received fatal wounds from killing Darth Sidious. Bane had fulfilled an ancient Sith prophecy of the Sathari. 27,000 years before these events, King Addis, a powerful Sith, foretold the prophecy of a perfect Sith, the Sathari. This prophecy was passed through verbal tradition, and it goes like this. The Sathari will be free of limits. The Sathari will lead the Sith and destroy them. The Sathari will raise the Sith from death and make them stronger than before. Even though Palpatine believed himself to be Sathari, most agree that Darth Bane became the Sathari when he destroyed the Brotherhood and created the Rule of Two. Sidious never meant to pass down any more power to his apprentices than he needed to. He used them as tools instead while he sought unlimited power. Sidious didn't adhere to the rule of two and paid the ultimate price. Even though he did essence transfer and eventually got killed again and again, he did eventually die. And here's some additional facts before we close it all out. The thought bomb on Rusan that held the spirits of multiple force users was finally unfolded by Kyle Katarn 1,000 years after detonation, freeing the spirits from the vortex. In the Clone Wars episode titled Sacrifice, an illusion of Darth Bane that looks like Shredder appeared to Yoda and was voiced by Mark Hamill. You do not fear me. No. Exist. You do not anymore. Oh, that Darth Bane's always causing trouble. A lightsaber crystal called Bane's Heart was given to Xana at some point. This might have been the crystal that Cordus gave Darth Bane. It was eventually found by a dark Jedi who was murdered by General Grievous. That crystal was found in Grievous's derelict ship by the Empire years later and was used in a lightsaber for a recreated version of General Grievous called NK Necrosis. Wow, wow, what a wonderful galaxy of Darth Bane we have here. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, give me a comment of what you want to hear about next, and special thank you to my patrons who made this video more possible than ever before. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. The legend will never die.